Hello, Unstoppable fans. My name is Sophia Kayoni. Welcome back to Athlete Spotlight, your go-to segment for updates on how GW's D1 athletes and teams have been handling their time during the coronavirus pandemic. Although the soccer season has proven to be unlike any other, the team still made the most of their time on the field, and it definitely paid off. I had interviewed players before their season had gotten started. However, a lot has happened over the past couple of months. The team has put in hard work and dedication into the short season that they were able to have during this unprecedented time. The team especially showed their skills during their games against rivals Davidson and George Mason, which brought them to be named the fourth seed in the semifinals against Dayton and ultimately bringing them to the A-10 final for the first time since 2011. Last week, I caught up with Sandra Weber and Ryan Cedeno to see how their season went. Introducing Sandra Weber, a graduate student originally from Germany, who has been a significant player on the team. He has earned the A-10 All-Academic Award this year. Weber is a part of the defensive line as well as a midfielder. Hi, Sandra. Thank you for joining me today. Hey, Sophia. Thanks for inviting us. Our next guest, Ryan Cedeno, a current sophomore originally from Florida, has been a key defensive player for the team. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Sophia. Thank you for having us. Thank you guys for joining me today, and congratulations on making it to the A-10 final. Ryan, what do you think best prepared the team for these games? Um, I think that we had a really strong mindset coming into the fall. Um, everybody had the same goal, and we discussed it even before the fall, before everybody came back to campus, um, that our goal is to get to the A-10 championship and win it. Um, I think even from then training throughout the fall and then coming to the spring with the same mindset really helped the team, especially with the new guys. We had a lot of new guys coming in because we graduated a lot of people um, from graduate students to freshmen to transfers. Uh, we brought in a lot of new guys and having them on board with the same mindset really helped the team a lot. We trained every single day with the same goal in mind and then at the end of the day, we had the players that we needed with the right mindset. So it got us as far as we did. Do you believe that the additional time focusing primarily on training had benefited the team for these games? Yeah, I think obviously I had it ups and down, it's ups and downs. Um, obviously, a lot of people were just anxious to play. And a lot of people have gone a very long period of time without playing in an actual real game with officials and everything like that. But at the end of the day, we still use that time as beneficial as we could. Uh, we made the most of it. We trained and really mentally and physically and like technically, tactically prepared ourselves to be able to do what we needed to do come spring. So we just went out there and did what we knew what we had to do. In the 53rd minute of the semifinal against Dayton, Sandra Weber scored the first goal of the game, ultimately winning the game for the GW team and allowing them to move forward to the A-10 final. Sandra, can you take us through that moment and the teamwork on the field leading up to it? Yeah, it was definitely an amazing feeling. Um, a lot of people doubted us before the season already. We were set 11th out of 13th um, before the season. And then we were the fourth seed coming into the playoffs, played Dayton as the first seed. And then scoring this goal, um, great assist from Tom, who actually assisted all of my goals this season. Um, yeah, it was just an amazing feeling, the whole team. Uh, was there, uh, deserved that goal, deserved that win eventually. And it just uh, made all the hard work that we put in over the whole year uh, worth it. And everything paid off in that moment um, with that win. And yeah, it was definitely amazing. Ryan, how can you explain the mindset of the defense throughout this game and to ensure that you guys came out victorious? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's something that we did all season long. We always had a strong back line. We communicated well. And even though we had a few guys that had some issues that had to not play in certain games, we um, had some depth in the back line. We had a lot of new guys with freshmen, transfer, graduate students. So I think even though we had to go through all that, we still were always on the same page. We still always knew what we had to do with communicating with each other and working hard. And then at the end of the day, we had a very strong goalkeeper and Justin Grady behind us. Um, he had a phenomenal season. And then just that tie between all of us defenders in the back line and Justin Grady just really helped us to be, you know, statistically one of the best de defensive teams in the nation uh, for quite some time. And, you know, going into that game, it was just the same mindset we do, but we need, 
what we do what we knew we needed to do uh, and take care of business, especially after securing the goal from Sandra, great goal from Sandra with an assist from Tom and Carter. Uh, we know we just had to lock it down just like we always did all season. And, you know, we took care of business. Well, you guys certainly did take care of business in that semifinal game. Going into the A-10 final must have been a huge deal for the team as it was for the GW community. Sandra, can you describe how the team was feeling about this and heading into this final game? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's obviously an amazing feeling. We had our last game before this year, spring season in November 2nd, 2019. So it's been ages actually before uh, we started this season um, playing an actual game. So before the season, we were we didn't really know where we stand. We didn't really know how other teams um, yeah, were practicing and where they stand. And then going all the way to the final was just obviously an amazing feeling. Ryan talked earlier about the team chemistry, the team mentality that we had, that we build up, a lot, build up along the way. Um, it's been a long year. We couldn't play a game in the fall, but we've become so strong as a team and going together. Like I wouldn't uh, yeah, substitute any player out of this team. Uh, that was basically the thing that made it so, spe so special eventually to sandwich each single player um, on the field in the final. And it was definitely a great feeling, um, even though we didn't end up winning it eventually. So although the game did not end how GW wanted it to, um, Sandra, were there any big takeaways that the team took from this game? Um, can you walk us through that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're a very young team. Um, as Ryan said, we brought in, I think, 10 to 14 players. I don't even know the exact numbers. But I think we have yeah, 10 to 40 new players, a lot of freshmen. Um, so there was a big break in the team after the 2019-2020 season. And having a lot of new players, but going all the way and then losing in the final, it's just we learned so, we learned so many lessons um, in terms of mentality um, for the final. Um, yeah, being ready to play that final. It's, it's a different, like all the games before the final, it's just a different uh, mentality that you have to set yourself, uh, that you have to put yourself into in the final. And yeah, we talked about that with the team. We probably weren't really ready to play that final, but it's certainly one thing, a uh, big motivation for coming back in the fall. And then, um, yeah, tactically, we talked about not really sticking to our plan in the final. That was probably one of the re reasons why we didn't end up winning it. Um, and that was probably because, yeah, most of the players or we were probably too caught up in the game in the final. And yeah, a little fo yeah, a little bit forgot what we actually had planned before the game. And all of those things are very, very important lessons um, coming into the fall semester next year. Great. Ryan, were there specific things that the team focused on throughout training before this big game? Yeah, I think uh, similar to any other game, we took it on pretty similar in terms of preparation. Uh, you know, we went through the scouting report. We went through um, just mentally preparing ourselves on the day before from things such as our diet to make sure we're stretching and rolling out properly. Um, you know, just preparing our bodies, especially after, you know, a quick turnaround from a Thursday game to a Saturday game after our big win on Thursday. Uh, you know, it took a lot in terms of getting our legs back, as our coach would normally say, uh, for the Saturday game, for a lot of people to go back out and play a lot of minutes. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a pretty big turnaround. Uh, we, we approach it pretty similarly to any other game. Uh, you know, if it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So we, we pretty much went through the same warm up and all that stuff in preparation for the game. The defensive line did take a lot on during the final against Fordham, um, with the ultimate score being zero to four, resulting in an unfortunate loss. Um, Ryan, were there points throughout the game that caused frustration among the defense? And how was the morale? And what, what did you all do to keep your heads up and keep pushing forward? Yeah, no, I think it's pretty tough, especially because looking back on it, uh, that was the first time the whole season that we actually were playing in a game that we were trailing. Um, because the only two losses previous to that were both in overtime. So the game was over immediately. And this game, they scored before we scored. And we were actually going, playing down. Um, and that was a new thing for us. So I think it, de it definitely brought upon some adversity, um, not only within the back line, but 
within the whole team. I think closing out the half, uh, the team as a whole might have been a little bit frustrated. Um, and, you know, at halftime, when we came off, you could see, like, we weren't where we wanted to be. We weren't where we normally are as a team. And, you know, by the end of halftime, we resolved that. We kind of came back out and was like, look, this is what we need to do to win this game. Um, we haven't been in a situation before, but we know what it means to fight and to earn something. So we were fighting, going out there, fight as a team. And unfortunately, we weren't able to get the result that we wanted. But now going forward into the fall, we know what that feels like. We know the we have that experience under our belt um, to be able to fight. And like Sandra said, we have a young team. So pretty much everybody that's going to be returning has that experience and has that now, knows that adversity. So it's going to be used to help us in going into the fall. Despite falling short in the final, men's soccer team did have a fantastic season. Sandra, what is your greatest memory from this season? Yeah, there are a lot of great memories this season. Um, obviously, one of the best memories was our 4-1 win against Davidson in our last regular season game. It was a must-win game, uh, all or nothing. This is basically what you live for as a soccer player. Um, if we won the game, we would go to the A-10 final. If Davidson won the game, they would go to the A-10 final. And we, we knew that situation. And that was probably the best game we had uh, the whole season. Uh, playing good offensively, scoring, grading chances, and still relying on our great defense. So that was definitely an amazing moment. And then definitely uh, the half at the semi-final against Dayton. I have to add, one, I have to add that to the, scoring the goal, uh, the winning goal for that. Um, yeah, for that game and then the, the moments before the final whistle. It's just, yeah, you can't describe that feeling when the last 10 seconds run down and you know you actually did it. You reached the A-10 final. Um, that is yeah, something that you just can't describe. Amazing feeling. And Ryan, what about you? What is your greatest memory from this season? Um, I think I'd have to agree with Sandra. I think uh, that game against Davidson, you know, coming off a tough loss against VCU in overtime, um, just the game before it really made it to be an all or nothing game. And, you know, you can't make it up. It's the winner goes through, like, you need to win this game. And we went out there, drove all the way out to North Carolina and did what we had to do. Uh, we came out with a 4-1 win. Um, you know, everything was just clicking. We were firing on all cylinders. We had people scoring goals, assists, and then our back line, you know, holding them to one goal. Um, so I think, yeah, it was a pretty great feeling knowing that, you know, we worked all season. Now we're finally going to the tournament. And then you can tell that we were very excited. We were very happy with the result, but we knew that this was only the beginning of what we needed to accomplish. Uh, we knew that we still had to go to the A-10 tournament and continue playing our best soccer there. And, you know, we went and did that in the semifinals. And unfortunately, the finals, we didn't we didn't come out with the win. But you know, that Davidson really prepared us, you know, and everybody was still on the same page mentally that, you know, we still have more business to take care of. Yeah, 100%. That was an amazing game. And I want to ask you both one last question. Um, is there anything that you wish to say to your teammates, coaches, supporters, and more? Yeah, I guess I could start. I just want to say thank you to uh, everyone that was supporting us throughout the season. I know it was hard to get fans out. So, everybody that was supporting from afar, uh, watching the streams, you know, the coaching staff who really believed in us, all the teammates who really, we were all in for each other and putting all of our passion out there on the field and in practice. Um, so yeah, thank you to everybody, the athletic department who really helped us throughout the uh, semester, the last two semesters actually to uh, get to as far as we did. And yeah, so thank you to everybody. We really do appreciate it. And we're looking forward to the fall. Yeah, I totally agree with everything Ryan said. It's been such a tough year uh, with COVID around overcoming quarantines, COVID cases, cancellations of games, and literally every single person that was involved in our process. Um, I want to thank them all, obviously, very much for helping us to get through. Um, coaches, players, they all made it very special. I want to add our athletic coach, who was always there for us, um, Samantha Monaco. Um, she helped us to get through injuries, um, overcoming all the, the quarantine, the quarantine and COVID stuff. And then, um, yeah, obviously, as Ryan said, unfortunately, we couldn't have fans. 
there, but we had a lot of fans supporting us um, in front of their laptop this semester. And I actually um, yeah, met a lot of people this, this week who I don't even know, but they started talking to me and saying, hey, you played a great season. Um, keep that up for next year. And I'm lucky that you lost it, but we are so proud of you. And, and I think that's what makes GW so special. So even that, I just want to thank everybody who supported us along the way. Thank you again, Sandro and Ryan, for joining me today. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Well, that's a wrap. A big shout out to all of GW men's soccer team for their hard work and making it as far as they did. Thank you again, Sandro and Ryan, for joining me. You can follow along on the men's soccer team journey through their Instagram and Twitter at GW Men's Soccer. Unstoppable viewers, it has been an absolute pleasure reporting to you and helping represent GW student athletes. I am ecstatic to announce that I will be the executive producer for GW TV Unstoppable next semester, and I'm looking forward to working on more content. In the meantime, check out our other videos on our Instagram and Facebook at GWTV underscore Unstoppable. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.